Hi, welcome to the video series Building Multi-Tiered Applications on Windows Azure. I'm Haishi, a Windows Azure Technical Evangelist. And in this video series, we'll go back all the way to the beginning and learn Windows Azure Cloud Services from ground zero. Well, it's not exactly from ground zero. Uh, I would assume you already have a good understanding about what cloud is and why you want to adopt a cloud platform. Because after all, uh, you are here watching this video, which means you are already on board uh, with cloud computing and you want to get things done. So I won't bother you uh, with those marketing talks here. Uh, of course, uh, throughout the series, we'll point out benefits of cloud computing as we touch on different characteristics and features of the cloud, but we won't have a dedicated session for that. In addition, I'd also assume you have a working knowledge of common Microsoft technologies uh, such as .NET, c -sharp, SP.NET, and maybe WCF, Entity Framework, etc. And because guess what? You can use all these technologies on Windows Azure. As a matter of fact, you can also use other languages uh, such as Java, PHP, and Python. And you can create non-Windows or virtual machines such as Linux machines on Windows Azure. However, the main focus of this series will be on the Microsoft technology. So where are we starting here? We are starting with a plain Windows computer with Visual Studio 2010 or 2012 installed. And this is the typical development environment you are using now, I hope. Uh, first thing uh, we need to do is to get the environment ready for cloud development. Uh, to get started, uh, you'll need two things. A Windows Azure SDK and a Windows Azure subscription. And both of which you can get from www.windowsazure.com. And this is the website. To get the SDK, all you need to do is to click on the tools and the resources link at the center of the page and then you pick um, the languages you want to use. Here I'm going to use .NET. And then all you need to do is to click on the install the SDK link and pick the uh, Visual Studio uh, version you're using. This will launch the Web PI installer and you can just follow the wizard and install the SDK. It doesn't take long and there's no customization you need to do. Just follow the wizard and everything will be installed uh, fairly quickly. So that's how to install the SDK. And to get the subscription, uh, you can go back to the home page and you can click on the free trial link at the upper right corner of the screen. And here you can um, try uh, Windows Azure free uh, for 90 days and the page lists all the free stuff you get uh, if you want to uh, try Windows Azure out. Or if you're ready to buy now, you can use the buy now link to buy a paid uh, subscription. I won't go through the subscribe process here, but the wizard is really simple. Uh, what you need is a Microsoft ID, which was previously known as Windows Live ID. Uh, you need a credit card and you need the mobile phone. You need your credit card as the payment information, um, but your credit card will be charged uh, absolutely nothing during your free trial. You have to specifically lift uh, the spending limit on the card before it can be charged for anything. You need a mobile phone because there's a verification process where a verification code is sent to your phone either through a, a text message or you can select uh, uh, to uh, let the computer to call your phone and read the code uh, back to you. All you need to do is to enter that code into the wizard and complete the uh, verification. I'm sure I'm 100% sure you can figure that out yourself. Now our environment is ready to go. And let's build our first cloud service. In this Hello World cloud service, I'm going to create a simple website that is to be hosted on the cloud. Here I have to mention that if all you ever want is a simple website hosted on cloud, 
you should consider using Windows Azure Web Sites service, which gives you a very affordable hosting solution for websites, among other benefits such as scaling and integration with uh, source controls, etc. Then why you want to choose cloud service? I guess the title of this series should give you some hints already. The websites, the Windows Azure websites, use a very simple architecture. You have a web front end and an optional database, and that's it. If your solution is more complex than that, uh, let's say you want to or, or you need to have a separate business layer, you want to use cloud service. Because cloud service gives you more flexibility in architecture and you can use it to build N-tiered solutions as well as hybrid cloud solutions, uh, which by the way means part of your system will be on the cloud while part of the system remain on premises. Cloud services also allows you to customize your hosting virtual machines in the way you like, such as installing a third-party library. Well, this is impossible on Windows Azure websites because in that case, uh, Windows Azure has the full control over the virtual machine. Uh, I hope this um, helps to uh, clean things up a little. And if you want to get more information, uh, you can go to this MSDN page and read uh, why and when to choose uh, different Windows Azure services for your solutions. And again, uh, this series will be focusing on cloud services. Now it's time for us to launch Visual Studio and create our first uh, cloud services. Once I have Windows Azure SDK installed, I can go to the File, New, Project, and you can see there's a new template, the cloud template that I can use to create my new cloud services. Here I'm going just to create a new cloud service, a uh, name, uh, let's say, Hello Cloud, and press Enter. Uh, as I just mentioned, in this cloud service, I'm just going to create a website that I'm going to host on the cloud. And the way to do this is to add a web role into my cloud service. The way to think about the relationship between a cloud service and the web role is that you can think uh, a cloud service as a container, as a boundary, uh, as a box that you can put different services into it. In this case, we'll create a new cloud service, which is a container, and we'll put one uh, web role, which is a website, into it. And in the future episode, you can see how this cloud service, this container, uh, can be considered as a management unit, um, a security uh, boundary, and a deployment uh, unit. So here, I'm going to uh, add a web role uh, into my cloud service. You can see I have uh, several templates I can choose from, and I'm just going to pick um, ASP.NET MVC4 web role. I just select the template, click Add, and click OK. And here this form is not uh, Windows Azure specific. This is a SP.NET MVC4 project template. And I can just pick any uh, template, for instance, the internet application, and click OK. And that's really all you need to do to create my first cloud service. I don't even need to write any line of code. Everything is created for me. However, here, um, let's do something. This, we need to write some code just to feel better, maybe. So here, I'm just going to change the uh, index page display to hello uh, cloud. That's all. That's all the coding I'm going to do for this episode. And let's see uh, what's happening here. In the Solution Explorer, uh, I have my cloud service project, which contains one uh, web role in this case. And the web role project 
as a separate uh, SPNet project uh, in, my, uh, in my solution. And you can see this is a, just a typical SPNet IMVC4 project. All the files and the folders uh, should be familiar to you uh, if you used SPNet IMVC4 before. The only exception is this web row uh, class. Uh, we'll talk about this web row class in future episodes. Um, and for now, uh, if you like, uh, you can just uh, remove it. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter in our case. So there you go. That's our first Windows Azure cloud service. Now I've got my first cloud service coded. How do I test it? Don't I need to deploy it on the cloud before I can see how it works? Uh, the good news is uh, you don't. Windows Azure SDK comes with a compute emulator and a storage emulator, which simulates the cloud environment on your local machine. This gives cloud developers a tremendous advantage as you can debug your cloud solutions locally, just as if you are debugging, let's say, a console application. What I can do here is to simply press F5. And you can see uh, the compute uh, emulator is spinning up. And my website will be deployed to this emulator. And I should see the result in a moment. There you go. You can see my hello cloud uh, message on the homepage. This is my first uh, cloud service running on my local emulator. And if I want to debug it, I can go back to my code. Let's say uh, I want to debug the about um, action. I, I can just set up a, a breakpoint here and go back to the page and click on about. And you can see the uh, breakpoint is hit. I'll let it continue here. And we are back at the about page. This concludes our first episode. The episode is short, but we've achieved a lot today. We configured our dev environment. We got a Windows Azure subscription. We coded our first cloud service. And we tested the cloud service on the local compute emulator. I hope this is a good start uh, of your cloud journey and I encourage you to try it out yourself and get a Windows address subscription today. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.